Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? My garden? Well, we have a giant hole in the ground where we once had a giant ponce on the tree. The problem was is that tree, it shaded out almost everything in this garden from bananas to our wildflowers to pumpkins, like nobody was doing good. And even honestly, the ponce wasn't doing well because it was being shaded out by oaks and oaks and oaks. So we got rid of it, which means I have so much more light. Everything is taking off in the garden, sometimes in good ways, sometimes not. But today what we're gonna be doing in the garden is, well, I bought some plants. We love a good shopping trip and I now need to get them in the ground in some sort of, you know, sensible orderly way. So today what we need to do is take all these wonderful wild plants that I impulse bought and come up with a kind of rough plan and just really we need to get them in the ground because it's been a couple weeks since I bought them. And plants in general, I am not great at taking care of when they're in containers. So today we're gonna go plant some native wildflowers. So you all may remember that last time we went and we bought like 15 plants on impulse by, <laughs> at Sweet Bay Nursery. So here we have it, my 15 plants that I've been taking eh, care of. I tried to move them over here just so at the very least I could keep them water since my hose is just back there. So if I'm gonna be real, I've been kind of stressing out about the fact that it's been a couple weeks since I bought them because I am not so great at staying on top of like watering potted plants and especially some of these like this one right here is rather on the big side, which means even though I water it really good, it like sucks up the water pretty fast. I'm kind of worried that like things are gonna start dying if I don't get them in the ground. Also like they're just kind of blocking the sidewalk. Is this you? Cause this is definitely me. Sometimes whenever I impulse buy, then like the plants just end up hanging out way too long. And then like, yeah. So let's get these plants back to the spot that we want to put them in. And then kind of, I don't know, we can just, we can chat. You know me, we're gonna chat, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna dig a bunch of holes. So let's get started. Ah, Ow. Oh my gosh, Who? oh no. Come back here, you're okay, are you okay? No. It's home safe, guys. <laughs> Come on, hey, aw. This one, can I fit you in? I'm, I'm sitting here going, I don't know that using the cart was actually helpful. I think I'm just going to take these two by two. Two at a time, right? Okay. Oh, heavy. I've been feeling like my front yard looks a little bit crazy, a little bit insane, a little bit too wild for my taste. And I've honestly been struggling it with because I think one of the challenges is there's no clear zones at the moment. There's just pumpkin running everywhere. Puerto Rican black beans trying to run everywhere. Sunshine mimosa that's pretty much covered also everywhere. And it just looks like a green mishy moshy mess. Which is why we need to get things a little bit tidier, a little bit orderly, and we need to make a better plan. But today is not the day for that plan. I'm just gonna give you what I'm roughly working with in my head right now because I bought plants and then I was like, where are you putting these? Literally, where are you putting these? And you wanna go buy more. So this is what I'm thinking to make this look a little bit less crazy. But I'm gonna need your guys' help because I need some ideas for parts of this too. So be prepared to put in the comments some ideas to help me out here. So what I'm thinking, well, we're obviously gonna keep the trellises. The trellises, this just needs to be harvest. This needs to be harvest. Hi Shiloh, how are you? But we don't wanna lose all the wildflower stuff. One of the things is, is this, this does not make any sense here. The Simpson stopper is gonna go. And then I was looking at old pictures of this area and thinking about what did I like? What did I not like? And one of the things I started to feel was like, it just feels so busy right now. So much stuff is happening. I feel like in the back tropical area, like back here, it doesn't feel like that as much because we got these like nice border and then there's stuff popping up. Over here, we've got the beds and I got to clean up a bunch of stuff because sweet potatoes need to be harvested. But it also has some pretty clear borders, which, <laughs> uh, let me just show you. The golden rods, just, it's, it's, uh, I just don't want to do anything about it right now because it's blooming, but it looks a bit crazy at the moment. And yes, that is tropical milkweed that has popped up from my neighbor's yard. So that's fun. But you can see, oh, it's starting to bloom. So pretty, so pretty. But otherwise, we do have generally pretty clear zones. I just want to figure out a way to like, you know, make it clearer. I feel like these are decent. The sweet potatoes just <laughs> a bit nutty. 
So here it's like, this is the vegetable section. Firebush, firebush, and this is wildflowers. Right now it's just kind of a couple wildflowers, but it's wildflowers. This has been mostly wildflowers, so that makes sense. Then, well, we got the giant hole in the ground area, which is just, it was rouge plant kind of sitting around the Ponciana tree, but now it's just a whole lot of nothing at the moment. But it's gonna end up filling in because you can see spots over here. We've got creeping sage and porter weed and blue curls and dotted horsemen, all sorts of goodies just hanging out. And of course the pumpkin, there's a pumpkin. The pumpkin is every, like legitimately every section of this. I change that as I go into the end of this year and the beginning of the next year. I wanna have a clear kind of stuff that's allowed to be in certain areas and where it's not allowed to be. Cause I don't wanna keep fighting this battle of just like it looks like chaotic because I'm not a big fan of that. I like wild, but not chaotic. So here's what I'm thinking in the front yard. This is obviously the vegetable section, this section right here. It shall be continued to be the vegetable section. This pumpkin needs to have a place that it can run, but it cannot run everywhere. And I'm thinking of actually taking advantage of this spot back here, that this can be the pumpkin patch. It gets a lot of sunlight, not right now because it's the end of the day. But this can be the pumpkin catch. They can have plenty of space to run around in here, but not everywhere else. Because honestly, like, what are we doing? It's climbing to the bed, my goodness. But then when I got up to this native section, well, that area back there, I was like, that's fine, leave it. This one, we need to figure out a way to make it look tidier. But this one, I was just like, this is just, this is looking crazy. Now, part of it's the pumpkin, part of it's that the Puerto Rican black beans keep jumping, but, this isn't living the best life that I want these plants to live. So I started to think through that it would be nice if we have some like eye relief, because that's one of the things, that's one of the things when you do design is that you want to have things that your eye focuses on and then you want like space around it. Now, a lot of people use grass. We're not bringing grass back up here. That's just like, that's not the thing that we're going to do. But the Sunshine Mimosa does fill in like a grass, but then I just got stuff popping up through it. And I think that's kind of the problem. So here's what I'm thinking. Okay. So visualize with me. We're gonna let the Sunshine Mimosa continue to be in front of here. It's a really good ground cover. It's a nitrogen fixer. It's got it's good things for pollinators. It's a host plant, yay, yay, yay. But we want sections for wildflowers. So what I'm thinking is if you imagine a quarter circle here at the edge of the property, so the flat side, flat side, and then imagine an arc that kind of follows where this pumpkin is, this can be a wildflower section which kind of mimics what was already happening here. It's not obvious because most of the stuff does not have flowers right now, but and also another arc right here, which would give me kind of clear areas of like, anytime something ends up in here, like these native poncettas, they just gotta get pulled because this is just supposed to be sunshine mimosa land. But I feel like it needs some sort of border to like help define it, kind of like those hedges do, but maybe not those hedges, maybe something else. This is where I would like your help. What can help create like this nice English cottage garden of like, this is a zone, this is a zone, this is a zone. What do you guys think? I don't know. So that's what I'm gonna kind of work off of for these plants. They're gonna end up, most of them, in this zone. And eventually this pumpkin will move out of the way, but not today. We're just gonna work on putting these in the ground so they don't die. So let's kind of figure out where this stuff is gonna go. So when I look at all these plants, I keep thinking to myself like, you always start with the big ones first and the biggest one's going to be tea bush. So tea bush is a bush. I know it's only like in the pot a foot, foot and a half tall, but it's gonna get big. Now I talked to Leah and she did say this one you can prune pretty tightly. And this one will be great to have near the vegetable garden, especially having things like tomatoes, which you need pollinators. Cause this thing, I mean, you can already see, it's evening time and there's still bees all over it, even though I just moved it. <laughs> they love tea bush. And if you look in the native gardening community, everyone talks about like the two kind of like powerhouse bushes is like fire bush, which we have plenty on this property and tea bush. And if you're going for like an English cottage garden look, like this one kind of what, is gonna give you that like cool, romantic, pinky, and it'll fill in a lot more than this. This is just, you know, it's a little baby thing right now. So I feel like this has to be in the back somewhere, not too far back, um, because I, I want it to be able to be seen from the road, but like maybe that's kind of like helping border the, that side of the semi-circle, no, semi-circle, quarter circle that we're gonna have. And then from there, we kind of build out. 
and I was thinking of putting it next to my scarlet hibiscus because scarlet hibiscus kind of leans every now and then so like I figure like well if it flops into these like nice cool looking flowers and like the cool grayish silver leaves and then you get this like really oh, you know that I mean you've seen the scarlet hibiscus with its like red I think it's gonna look so good just like boom even though this is gonna be more English cottage garden, more pastels, I think having like that, just like that pop of red, and I feel like the scarlet hibiscus is really good for that because when it gives you a hibiscus, it's not like a lot of wildflowers where it's like little teeny tinies, like it's like, boom. I may not help wildlife a lot, but I'm really, really good looking. So I think we're gonna put this right near, there's some rouge plant in the way, but whatever, I don't care. There's tons of baby rouge plants popping up. So that's where I'm thinking first. I don't know if you guys can see my scarlet hibiscus right now. It's over here. I feel like the ends have like kind of died off. They properly. <laughs> I should properly purchase it. Um, but not right now, because that's not the priority. But if you can see, it's kind of like doing a tilty thing. I need to add some more soil. We'll do that later. Again, not today, not the priority. So I'm thinking this is gonna go, come on beast, kind of like here-ish. Can y'all see that? So it's gonna come back here. But because it's gonna end up taking a bunch of space, I'm kind of basically thinking like this whole area is gonna be like tea bush. And then I'm gonna keep it shorter because I don't want it like being way up here. I want it like here -ish. That's the idea. I legitimately have no idea if you were even able to tell what I just did. So <laughs> I'm moving you closer. So here's where the tea bush is gonna go. You see that guys? It's silvery, so it's not standing out. Once it takes up more of the space, I think it'll be more obvious. And I think it actually looks cute next to these rouge plants. They look super unhappy because they're getting way too much sunlight. But you can see they have pale pink flowers. No, you can't see that because they're so small. Look up closer. They have these pink flowers. Can you see them? They're so tiny. And honestly, the plants look super stressed out. Like you see all this leaf curl, Ugh, so stressed. But then they get these cute little berries that little birds like to eat. Look at that. And then you put that, you know, with you see the like tea bush back here. Look at that, look at that color. That's just giving us beauty. That's just giving us like romantic. We love it. So when I kind of look at the plants that are gonna be the biggest, the next, well, huge are gonna be those Southeast sunflowers. And I've been thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking like, do I put them like right behind where the giant hole is? And like, you know, the pumpkins can move all around them or do I put them in a different spot? But honestly, I gotta think about the windows too. You guys remember when we were at Sweet Bay, like if I put them right here and they grow the four or five feet tall, I mean, now we're kind of blocking this window and I don't really know that I want to do that. <sighs> so I've been brainstorming a lot about what to do with them. Um, Cause I, I'm, I want them, I like them. But then also like one of the things, you know, with a plant that doesn't bloom to fall, kind of lingers, lingers, linger. I think it might end up looking too crazy and that might stress me out based on like how, what the neighbors think because we've gotten really away from a classic looking yard. So what I did is I had an idea of a place that we might put them instead. Now they're still gonna be in the front yard. We're still gonna be able to see them and they're still gonna be kind of part of the wildflower, but they're gonna go in a place that honestly, there was another plant that was supposed to do a job and it didn't do its job and now it's just kind of a strange thing, which is the circle hedge. The circle hedge, when we even first moved in, this is something that pre-exists us living here, used to have, I don't know, what is it? Periwinkles or vincas or something. Then they got overgrown, we tore them out. And then there's just been like a hole in there. Then we put this like black diamond, scarlet, red, what are they, crepe myrtles? And the thing looks like nothing. But honestly, this is maybe a really good spot to have some tall plant coming up and through. And then in the spring and summer as it grows, you know, it's okay that it looks maybe a little bit like what is going on because you have the circle hedge to kind of define the space. So I'm thinking the sunflowers go in here. And that way, if they really fill in based on the size that I saw at Sweet Bay, like that's okay. And then they're gonna get huge. And you might say it might block the light post. Who cares? The light post doesn't put out light anyways. And also it's very wispy and wide. So I think it's going to end up just being kind of around it until it's done. Based on my original thought process, that's the only plants that I was like, we should probably just put them in a different space. Everything else I feel like would make sense over here. And also like the bees, so many bees <laughs> right now. So the next up when it comes to like size, is going to be those button sages that we bought. Button sage lantana or AKA lantana in Volcrata. And these ones, this one's gonna get like, I think two, three feet tall. Also you can prune it, not a big deal. We get, again, we got like these little pale flowers. You can't see this, I know, I'm turning you around. Okay, so now you can see, we get these like little umbrals of flowers 
they're not going to be quite as big as the ones that are the exotic and invasive lantanas that you can buy at the store but you know you're going to get an umbral that's like that big eventually once these are established and they can really put energy into this so we're going to get little pops of white but mostly we just have this very fresh green look which is cute we are fans of that and of course the bees are going to like it and the butterflies Woohoo! yay and the reason i'm going to talk about the other other one which is salt and pepper the large one the melanthera nivea is that i'm thinking i loved leah's point i've done this before too anyone who's like done consultations with me or workshops knows like i always talk about like making in triangles so we're gonna make a triangle in front of the the tea bush but we want to space far enough out that when this thing starts to grow these aren't immediately like poorly placed and we're like oh no you can't see our button sages so i'm gonna move them probably about three four feet out in front and we're gonna make a triangle, or I guess with the tea bush, a diamond, you know? We're gonna go like kinda, you get the idea. Bush there, we have a scarlet hibiscus there. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up going button stage there. So let's move you out of the way. Everybody's getting out of the way. Well, this is the reality of having a very wild and crazy yard is it's not very obvious what I'm doing, but you can see here's the tea bush. Here are the two button sages and here is your salt and pepper. So we've created kind of this, like I was saying. So you can see this part of the triangle. Boop, boop, right? A lot closer. And then further back is this tea bush. So we got about four feet three to four feet between the t-bush and your first button stage so that gives that space to come this way and because this is south facing i know the plant's going to want to come this way more than this way especially now that we're heading towards winter and so now we can start planning out where all the rest of the stuff's going to go amidst where this pumpkin plant is but honestly like uh and you can actually see you might not be able to tell we'll move it closer here this plant is not a weed this is actually that same pink flamingo sage that i had before it's still alive and it's been bouncing back so that's great and it's already right here which will be great so we'll create a pattern using knowing that one's there with the three others that we've got so next up we're going to put the tropical sages in place because we need the tropical sages to help with the fact that the liatrices want to fall down so we're going to need to use them as a moral support system for liatris flowers Here's one of the liatrices. We know we're going to want to put this near by because it's just going to do that. So we're going to put it there. It's got some friends to flop over on. I think we're going to go here. Not front, here. And then I'm going to throw in the other liatris. Right here. I got my semi-circle I'm still working off of so that you can actually see the purple more once it comes in. <gasps> oh no! Oh, my poor quadicums. And the quadicums we're going to put over here. We have a sprinkler head over here. I think that looks cute. I also think we need to get a third one of these because I just think it's going to fill in this area better. And you're going to have a pop of blue. We got the purples right nearby. Then we got pink, 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 pink. I'm also going to throw on the woodland sage right behind this because it also likes to flop over a lot. And the beach verbena we'll throw down low because it's okay. It will just wind through everything and it'll kind of come up, but not really. And that's, that's it. But yeah, so now we kind of, if this is the semicircle, you know, we got tropical sages kind of edging that area. And we've got a lot more in here. I'm not going too far this way and I'm not coming too far this way yet. I think that's going to be a good place to start for, you know, at least to get the plants in. Here's the great thing is some of these, if I need to move them really quickly, I can. And if I, you know, it's okay. I'm okay. If I have to let a plant die and then just put a new one in, that's fine. And these little guys, they're going to reseed all over this area. That's why I really need a game plan of like a clear edge. So I'm really looking for your guys' advice. Is it going to be like stone? I think wood's not, not wood. Wood breaks down too easily. So I'm um, no stone or wood, but stone, maybe, pavers, maybe, other things, hedges, maybe, all these ideas, I'm open to them. And I'm very curious. And if you guys have stuff, like, of course, let me know. 
but now it is the time to dig holes. Morning. It is the next day and the weather is so nice. 68, 69, maybe 70 right now. So it's just like perfect time to get our Maddox pickaxe and start digging some holes. Oh my gosh, come on. So the idea I'm thinking is to put these guys like, get over here. You know what, I'm probably gonna have to stake these because they just really wanna fall over for right now. But I think once they get going, because you saw the ones at Sweet Bay, they were totally unsupported. <laughs> but what do you think, in front, behind? Probably in front, there's way more space in front than there is behind. And the nice thing is, is these are only in one gallon pots even though they're really tall. Yeah, I guess I'll just do like one on that side, one on this side. I'll keep this clear because that's how I cut into the bush. I'll be down here. Some big root right here, probably from one of these little shrubbies. I tend to just like work around roots because the more you can keep intact, the better. The good thing is I let this dry out a little bit. It's a little bit root bound. Honestly, I'm like such, I'm so not nice to the root systems of plants. I'm very aggressive about just being like, get in there, do your thing. And especially with plants like this that are gonna reseed, I'm not as worried about fixing the root systems on them. We're gonna get some stakes for later to hold this thing up because it's so top heavy right now. And it doesn't have the leaf stuff that holds it up like it did with the ones at the nursery. So I will get something to kind of just prop these up. When it comes to staking these things, you get one of these like twisty ones. You want to come really close to the plant, get it nice and down in here. And then we're going to just kind of see which way do I go this way. We're going to twist the plant a couple times around just to give it some upright support. And I'll show you what that looks like. And now you can see what that's going to look like. So you got the yellow twists. I picked the yellow ones because I think it'll compliment that there's supposed to be yellow happening right here and I stake them about the same height so that these are a little bit more symmetric and you can see that they should hopefully then fill in we'll get the pops of yellow we'll still get some bouncing in the wind and it'll also look a lot better once I come in and I trim all this up I clean this up because they'll stand out more and they'll be happy right now I think one of the things is that they just don't look happy Happy, happy, happy. But they're gonna get there. It just takes a minute. Native plants are an investment, not just of money, because they're not terribly expensive. It's all about time. You have to invest a lot of time before they really come back and they're like, look at me, aren't I cute? So now we're gonna go back over to the main area. And we're gonna start planting all of that. So let's go head first to the tea bush, especially before all the bees start messing with it, because there's like a lot of bees on that plant. So here we are in the morning again. It looks like probably a jumbled mess. That's what I'm going for. It's looking like a jumbled mess but over time this is going to fill in and hopefully once we get i think a lot of this pumpkin out of here because i feel like the pumpkin's making it look very messy at the moment then hopefully once you got kind of like a just a solid mat unlike here but like more like this i think it'll look a little bit you know we're gonna be like liking it so let's go back here to the tea bush before the bees are all over it so unlike the other ones it's gonna take a little bit more digging because we've got a three gallon pot i tend not to like to get natives in three gallon pots because the big thing if you learn about natives is they put a lot of effort in the beginning into roots in general. Not all, but many of them put a lot of time going into the ground. So the bigger they are, the more the more wrapping around they've done of themselves. But just what it is. This one's interesting. It actually almost looks like three little plants. It is all one plant, but it looks like three. So we are going to just get this big old thing right here and we're gonna make a nice big hole it's like oh this was my border material from before first i usually try to mark what i'm doing because once you move a plant it becomes easy to be like drifting on what spot you're actually going for so i like to pick just kind of quickly like just give a like a here's where you want to dig <laughs> as you go So after you dig your hole for a while, you want to check it to see how close are you actually to this. So we are 
we went with actual proper ground level. We probably have about one, two, two more inches. We should probably go down, but if we cheat it because I got the dirt right here. We'll just mound up around it. I don't have to dig as far because there's a couple roots that I could fight with. This is how I usually get things out of here. I take my feet, I hold the pot, squeeze it with my feet, and then I pull from the base plant. This is why letting the plant dry out just a little bit, because if this was like mud, what happens is, is if they don't have a lot of roots established, the whole pot just starts falling completely apart. And then you're, you're just stressing the plant out because you're agitating every single root on it. So the other thing I look at when I'm gonna plant it is like what side was naturally leaning towards the sun for wherever they stored it. It's not that side, it's this side. You can usually tell because there's a little bit, there's a couple ways. One, you can look at like how, which way the branches are growing. So I can tell more branches grew that way. So, and then you also look at the direction of the leaves. So if they're pretty uniform, and what I mean by the direction of leaves. So what will happen is, if you imagine like these are almost like solar panels that want to follow the sun around. And depending on the plant, it depends on how much they actually move around. But what can happen is if they mostly get their sun from one side, you'll notice all of the tops of the leaves are pointing a direction. So here's the question. Do you go with it or do you try to correct it? Now this plant's gonna get some decent sunlight from especially east to west, west to east. So I don't really care which way I put it in, um, honestly. So then it becomes more about like, what do you like about it? <laughs> is there a side that you want to continue to have? So those are things you can think about. And we will move quickly because I'm starting to see some bees. And while I love the bees, um, usually they don't want you fussing with things that they're trying to like get to. So sun's starting to hit, the nectar's warming up. B.O.B. There, see the ground level right here? And you see how this is actually still like a inch and a half? Normally you would want to make sure this was at the height of this. But because I've got this mound that was created from digging out the tree, I can just build up around it pretty easily because I just have loose soil all around anyways. And so I'll just take advantage of that. And we'll just build up this spot a little bit because it was uneven ground anyways. <laughs> you might not have that advantage and you're gonna actually have to dig all the way down to properly fill your hole. And that's okay. But today, today we had a way to get around it. So we Next up, we're gonna do this button sage. And one of the things you should always do when you're planting an area is do, when you place the plants, always, always go with your larger important placement statement pieces first. Because what you don't want to do is start with the little ones that have more give, and then you're kind of forced to put the tea bush in a spot that's really not ideal. Especially plants that are going to self seed over and over again, like your tropical sages and stuff. Because if it's off by a few inches, who cares? It's probably gonna reseed in the spot you really, really wanted. But your tea bush, like, that's it. That's where it's gonna be for years and years, unless you go buy another one or you propagate it or something. So I always start with the largest plants first, and then I work from there. And then I tend to work from one side to the other with the side that has more give on it. Cause like if I'm running up against like a driveway, I'll start on the hard side of the driveway and then move through the spaces that maybe it's not as important or if I'm trying to center, I'll start with the plants that are on the center of the placement and then work out. So think through whenever you're digging up a bunch of spots, what's the most important plants that if you don't get them right, the design, the needs of the plant, whatever, are just not gonna be like, it's not gonna be good. You know, that's what you wanna think about. So I know someone's going to be asking me, Jacqueline, your soil, it's so dark. Mine looks like sand. Why doesn't yours look like sand? Well, one, this used to be a lawn. So lawns that have been cared for for long periods of time tend not to look sandy. But two, the way that I killed my grass, and I can throw that video up at the end, is I always threw mulch on top. Mulch, once it breaks down, gives you a lot of organic matter. 
maybe a really, really rich soil when everything's all said and done. So I have very, very rich soil. So lots of plants like my yard. This one smells gorgeous. Oh, wow. That's like a really, wow. Wow, 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 wow. I have had invasive lantana camera. I have had invasive lantana montividensis. I have had native lantana pepesa. And no one smells as good. Well, many of them don't smell good at all. But this one actually smells nice. Almost, I don't even know what that smell is. It's reminding me like of a bubble gum I used to eat. Zebra bubble gum, anyone? <laughs> Way back when. That's what it smells like. It's not overpowering. It's got this just like a very nice sweet scent. I didn't notice that before. That's really pretty. Give me a nice little happy shrub. That'll be a nice happy shrub. And what I plan to do is I want to keep these actually where I'll come through and I'm going to prune them from time to time so that they kind of have some space between these other things so that it's not just like a mound of plants. So I guess I'll get this really nice smell because what I also remember about most of the other ones is their leaves were like sandpaper and as you reach through them you get like little micro cuts on your arms. Super not fun. Not this one. This is nice. Yes. Yes. So some of you guys might not have realized that this button sage that I keep calling button sage is actually a lantana. And the reason, um, yeah. So using just the name lantana has led many a, many a native newbies into trouble because they go to the Home Depots, they go to the Lowe's, they go to the local garden center and they buy lantana. And the lantanas at those stores are invasive to Florida. So that's always such a bummer. And trust me, if you've done it, don't feel bad. I did it too. I was like, oh, I heard there's a native lantana. Whoopsies. Now I have invasives in my yard when I thought I was doing good. What a bummer. And so the only two native lantanas to Florida are pine land lantana, AKA lantana depressa, variety depressa. That almost sounds depressing. <laughs> and then Lantana involucrata, aka the button sage. The other one's only native to like Miami Dade County, if I remember right. Oh, these pumpkins are so annoying. Who'd have thought? Pumpkins would be the annoying thing. Oh, come on, get out of the way. So, I have a whole, if you guys are interested about lantanas, I have a whole video series explaining like how to tell the difference between native and not, uh, native and invasive lantana. And also, if you have a, an invasive type, some are actually sterile and how you can actually tell if yours are sterile. Um, because there are ones that were developed by the University of Florida. And if you really want to be interested in lantana, there's some documentaries about how bad... Because lantana is invasive to Florida, the, the, like the can, lantana camera, lantana montepidensis. Um, but in India... Lantana is like what Brazilian pepper is to Florida. It's like covering forests that the tigers live in. And it's killing off a lot of the deer that the tigers eat. So they literally will pay villagers to help come rip out Lantana camera. It is so bad. Like if you watch the documentary, it's so bad there. You can just like YouTube, you can find them. So there's like whole restoration things happening out there trying to really eradicate it. So I know I get a bunch of viewers on my lantana videos from India specifically because of that. And that's the thing, a plant can be great in one part of the world and it's invasive in another. You never know. I have people from Europe, England, a bunch of people from England, and they're like, oh my God, you plant goldenrod? It's an invasive species. And it is over there. It's terrible what it's doing over there to their wetlands, but here it's native. So, as you're on your journey, learning what's actually native to your space, <laughs> which types are native, becomes important. So let's get this gorgeous, nicely smelling, come on. <gasps> no, no, no. So what I just noticed, as I was pulling up, besides the wonderful smell, is as I was pulling, I'm noticing, let me bring you in closer so you can see this too. So as I'm, as I'm pulling, you notice how the earth 
the dirt splitting there and lifting. So that means either the roots aren't as established as the other one, or we're having roots tear up. So that's why you started seeing me beat this. Beat, 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 beat. Because I'm trying to loosen up the dirt from the side of the pot so that I don't have a bunch of roots tear in here because I want this to come out pretty much as a whole. If some of the dirt at the bottom doesn't come out, that's fine. But if, if all the roots start getting shredded, I will stress the plant out. So we'll beat, beat, beat. So we're just gonna take it. I guess I'm just gonna, and we can see a lot of this is really loose. I wonder how mature, I wonder if they upplanted it recently. We were able to get it out without it breaking. And I can see there's roots up and down this, so it must have, you know, it either got up potted or got knocked somehow. There's probably a root right here that was holding it from this direction because I can kind of tell this is where the wobble is. It's not the other direction. So right in here is where we have a problem area. I did not dig the hole. No, I did not. Did I? Come on, pumpkin. Oh, come on. Pumpkin's like grabbing all my dirt. Like, no. It's gonna stay on top of me so I can reroot. No, I don't want you to. You guys are just a pain in my butt right now. Oh, come here. This all, this whole mess. Come right here. Oop. All right, onwards to salt and pepper. I feel like we're gonna start picking up some speed now because now we're all in one gallon pots and one gallon pots I do not have to dig that deep for. And we're moving away from where the tree used to be. So I'm away from a lot more of the roots to make it harder to dig. And look at this, our flamingo. I really, if you know what, if you've got a choice, consider flamingo pink, tropical sage. Because it's just so pretty. So, so pretty. So this is really cool. If you guys remember the other salt and pepper, it's, it's definitely a mound. This one, I wish I would've gotten a good shot for you guys, um, but it's a much more wispy, fairy-like plant. And uh, so these are gonna bounce more in the wind. You know me, a flower bouncing in the wind is my jam. Well, how interesting. It's got like kind of a pretty size, good size root there. And they've clearly been pruning off some canes in here. Not canes, but you know. You know what I mean, big branches in here. So that just kind of tells us a little bit about maintenance for the future. So we're gonna end up cutting some of this back. Done. Like I said, see, this is gonna start going faster now. Okay, who's next? Flamingo pink, flamingo pink. Or should I just do this so I don't have to move? Go right here in front of us. Come here, Leatrice. You hang out on the butt stage. Oh, this one, there's no flowers on it today. Well, you're gonna get all settled and happy. So pretty. So we're gonna have sage smells. We're gonna have this bubble gum smell. <laughs> I don't think Leatrices have any smell. That's okay. We don't need too many smells. But that, that's like a really pretty smell, this shrubbery. I need to start like weed whacking more in this area. And all this pumpkin's gotta come out. It's so annoying. Right? You agree? Thanks. Thank you for agreeing with me. All right, you know what? We're gonna do like a montage right now so we can pick up the pace and get the rest of these planted. What do you guys think? You good with that? Let's go.
Okay, we're done digging all the holes. And honestly, digging the holes has taught me a few things. One, there are a couple plants in here that I thought had long gone because of the tree being taken out and them running the equipment through. Um, but I realized there's still some sky flower still hanging on. There's still some, uh, there's an orange cone flower. It's not blooming right now, but it's there. So I need to really think through and I need your help. So I really, really do mean this. I love hearing from you guys. You guys give me so many great ideas. Is how can I make this get tidier looking? What could I do with the design? Not paving everything with grass, but like what kind of materials? What do you guys think? I'm gonna start sketching some stuff out and I would love your input. I really, really mean it. <laughs> you know I do. I'll link for you a series about Lantana so that if you wanna learn more about Lantanas and I'll link the shopping trip right here so that you can figure out all the scientific names or if you just like to watch people shop, that's for you too. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.